Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here. I'm back to be ready to do a brand new movie review because I'm already prepared wearing my Ghostbusters shirts that I had for a long time. Because now we finally got the brand new Ghostbusters movie. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters Afterlife. <laughs> Yes, uh, this is a new movie that's taking place 32 years later after the events of the original Ghostbusters that goes around, you know, busting paranormal activity with all these ghosts floating around in New York City. But then their business had declined. And now it's being set to Somerville, Oklahoma, where Egon Spangler had lived. And now that he's gone, we now have the new kids uh, taking over, which focuses on uh, the older brother, the younger sister, and then we got uh, the other two. Uh, one is a, a classmate, and the other one is a working partner. So, yes, we got... Um, Trevor, Phoebe, um, as well as Podcast, and Lucky, together busting some ghosts that they just found inside the garage where Egon Spengler lives. Yeah, they, they, got, they found the Ecto-1, they found all the equipment inside for the basement, and of course this is exactly the place that their mom had now uh, picked up after eviction. <laughs> anyway, it's now being directed by Jason Reitman, you know, Ivan Reitman's son, who's the director of the first two movies. And we all know that he's the director of Juno, as well as Young Adult, Tolly, Labor Day, Man, Woman, and Children, even the up in the air. <laughs> and he's joining in with uh, Gil Keenan, who did Monster's House. Monster House, sorry. And he also did the Poltergeist remake. Go figure. So they joined together to finally bring back the Ghostbusters we all know and love. And it truly respects the original. I'm sure it does respect the sequel too, because the 2016 the female-driven reboot that, that Paul Feig had directed, also co-wrote, uh, basically it was definitely an oddball diverse for many viewers and other fans around because some people like it, other people hated it. Um, give or take, I mean, at least it's Ghostbusters, and at least they tried as hard as they can to bring back its spirit, but I know. I do admit, though, it, it was a bit of a disappointment when I saw it back in 2016 twice, and yes, I got the Blu-ray that had the extended cut. Uh, I do respect the female cast, though. And I do respect Paul Feig, but unfortunately, though, it needed better writing. There's just too many forced humor in there. Some work, some don't. And there's a lot of sexist jokes in there. It doesn't work either. Okay, they are funny. Don't get me wrong. It's just the script and the story and how it it turned out to be. So, here, here you go. But again, I, I don't hate the movie, though. I just, I don't love it, but that's the best they could do, at least. But don't blame me. Don't blame everyone. Blame Sony for that, coming up with this idea, if that's the case. But I do respect Paul Fee for what he's doing, still. It's not the Ghostbusters we all know and love. 
for that matter. Anybody could play a Ghostbuster whenever you're a male, female, tall, short, young, old, yellow, white, black, blue, green, you name it. Everyone could be the Ghostbuster we all know and care for. But I was really excited that we were finally going to get the one that serves its purpose. So There's going to be spoilers in this review, just so you know. Because, let's face it, I waited this long, even after two and a half years. Maybe even a year and a half, because this was supposed to come out in the summer of last year. There exclusively as planned as they wanted to but unfortunately because of the COVID-19 pandemic going around they couldn't release it so it's a shame and I know and I know they've been having hard times you know trying to get the script right I know they've been working so hard I know Dan Aykroyd was trying his best to see if everything will get ready for it they want to bring back the cast again no matter what, and I know Harold Ramis passed away in 2014, which was a shame. I mean, have it continued to go on a long time ago, none of this would have never happened. But this is the best they could do, so let's live with it. I mean, we want the legacy to live on and, and respect everyone's pride. So here we go. The movie stars Fit Woodhart from Stranger Things, uh, Carrie Coon, uh, McKenna Grace, Paul Rudd, Logan Kim, Celeste O'Connor, you may remember her uh, previously in Freaky, Josh Gag, who's the voice of Muncher, <laughs> that's the new uh, Slimer, in a way. Uh, J.K. Simmons, Olivia Wilde in an uncredited role, Bokeem Woodbine, yes, from Jason's Lyric, Strap, and uh, Spider-Man uh, Homecoming. And yes, we got the original cast who just reprised their roles. Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Ernie Hudson, Andy Potts, Sigourney Weaver, and... In spirit, Harold Ramis. Okay. It's written by Gil Keenan and Jason Reitman, who's also the director of the movie. The movie began 32 years later after the Ghostbusters team had defeated Gozer in 1984, as well as Bigo in 1989, yep, setting the events for the two films that we had. Not counting the 2016 the reboot where they had to defeat uh, all the other ghosts around. But even the, uh, the ghost logo for that matter. Okay. So thank goodness they're not taking events from that. But anyway. Yes, the Ghostbusters had now became defunct. I mean, they also had busted some more ghosts and the real Ghostbusters as well as extreme Ghostbusters. So if you get the idea but unfortunately after the supernatural activities that they've been doing had declined in New York City so now their headquarters had eventually turned into a Starbucks why does everything have to turn into a Starbucks these days <laughs> everyone's so desperate for coffee <laughs> no wonder okay anyway Egon Spengler who was played by Harold Ramis, no longer with us, of course, God rest his soul, had relocated to Somerville, Oklahoma, where a Gosvian cultist known as Ivro Shandor had all these mining operations that set there, and he begins to capture the bestial identity that tends to follow from those mines and went straight into his farmhouse where he was ready to destroy it by using his equipment. 
Yeah, he set up the ghost traps. He, he set up all the mine traps around in the crops and all straight into uh, the electricity mines around. Yeah, all, all these electricity uh, silos. And then at that point on, when he finally stopped this spirit, he died of a heart attack uh, while sitting inside his chair, you know, ready to set the trap open. Yeah, because it gave him a big fright. Uh, year, weeks later, we meet uh, Egon Sestrain's daughter named Kali, who's played by Carrie Coon, who's a mother of her two children, uh, Trevor and Phoebe, both played by Friend Woodhart and McKenna Grace. They move to Egon's farm after they've been evicted at their own home. Trevor meets a local girl named Lucky, played by Celeste O'Connor. And they, he got a job working at a diner as her working partner. While Phoebe is enrolled in a summer science class at a local middle school with her teacher, a symbologist, Gary Gooperson, who's played by Paul Rudd. Carrie will later date him. We did get a, a visitor by Janine Melness, who's played by Annie Potts. So this is the last time we'll get to see her. A forums colleague that Egon has left enormous debts and the land is becoming completely worthless. Yeah, people kept talking about um, him when he was around. I mean, even before and after his death. Which I know that kind of leads to numbers of mysteries around happening. Therefore, Phoebe discovers the house is being completely haunted. That's where she begins to, to discover the spirit inside her room. She found the device of the PKE meter. Yes, that's the one that Egon had used all the time, so you'll always recognize that. So she did, uh, basically uh, Trevor found that underneath the chair, but she'd been using it uh, trying to see where all the spirits have came by. You see like a checkerboard where apparently the spirit was playing the checkers or chess actually. Yeah, yeah, there was a chess board right there and the spirit was playing chess, so at least a checkmate. <laughs> And it keeps moving around. Then she noticed that the door was right open and everything. And then next thing you know, Phoebe went inside the basement where Egon had uh, had all of her, where Egon has all of his experiments around. We even have his lamp that's moving around, so it has its own spirit too, and it explains uh, all of the proof around about what he was doing and how he was going to continue uh, doing some ghost busting and all. You know, because he's also warning people, even warned the Ghostbusters team a long time ago that the apocalypse is going to come. So that means, well, a lot of things are going to happen. Trevor, on the other hand, uh, did went to the garage and he found the Ecto-1. It wasn't working. Granted, but he was doing his best to fix it. So, yes, it was already, you know, dirty and and it was already, like, having some parts not working. But he's doing his best to fix it. And that's what he was doing all this time. Uh, but then at times, you know, he was, while he was still with um, Lucky, uh, they went out with their friends. Uh, they were about to explore. You know, they're just having fun. So they found out that the spirit somehow came directly up down into the well. Um, and before that happened, um, Phoebe actually found the ghost trap that was inside the basement, showed it to uh, Gary to see if this will work. So they had to connect it directly into those jumper cables from his car to the school bus. Uh, of course, um, I also forgot to mention that Phoebe did met um, a young kid named Simply Podcast. 
who's uh, played by uh, Logan Kim. Yeah, simp yeah, hard to believe his name is Podcast because he does all of his podcasting all the time on the internet. You know, talking about you know all these um, paranormal and supernatural activities going around. Like he wants to chat with everyone about that, and hoping that this legend is true and everything that's going around. And hopefully he'll make contact with the Ghostbusters and, and all. Who knows if this ever, ever happened. Like he'll start doing interviews with them. Uh, Phoebe was also looking at some old videos on YouTube about the Ghostbusters commercials and all the, the news events that was happening. It was really nice to see those archive footages. So at that point on, uh, let's get back to this scene, was when... They try to open the ghost trap. All of a sudden, uh, the spirit had finally got released. And it's uh, one of the gatekeepers, or maybe it's the key master, <laughs> that, that got revealed and wants to move it around. And then um, later on, uh, Phoebe, along with uh, podcasts, were together trying to you know, find some more proof and try to see what's going on then then she found the the proton pack uh, with the proton gun that she's going to try it out and see if it works and it does and then later the up to one is now working with Trevor driving so now they're about to head off because they just found a ghost named Muncher yes who's just like uh, let's put it this way Sort of like an albino slimer. He's just going around munching a lot of stuff uh, inside the, the farmhouse around. All, all the facilities. And now, yeah, the warehouse facility, I think that's what it was. And then they they wander around. They're about to capture that ghost. They have started shooting the, the proton gun. And the ghost just flied off. All the way going straight into uh, the entire town of Summersville. So now, yes, uh, <laughs> uh, Trevor, along with Phoebe and Podcast, are riding around the Ecto 1. It had a gunner seat, too, so that's cool. Now Phoebe gets to sit on there and be able to shoot the, the muncher, which causes several chaos here and there. I mean, yeah. Some some of my some of those accidents here and there. Everyone already saw what, what was going on. Uh, they were shocked, and then next thing you know, uh, they got arrested because uh, they they almost crashed the Ecto One too straight into the bridge. And now um, they're trying to explain that the whole thing is true. Like all this time, Egon had been warning us about that there's going to be more ghosts coming around and that's where they're going to start reviewing Gozer yeah she's going to make a comeback again with the gatekeeper and the key master yeah the gatekeeper and that's where everything seems to go haywire because by the time um, at night uh, I mean Gary and and uh, Carrie have been dating you know they went to that local restaurant before this whole Thing had happened and even afterwards uh, because they picked them up from jail at the police station all of a sudden uh, Gary just went to Walmart just to grab some ice cream and and some syrup and then suddenly he spots uh, <laughs> you wouldn't believe this um, all these tiny uh, state puff marshmallow mans uh, that are mini puffs <laughs> so yes I mean there's like several mini puffs coming out of the bag and they're just going around you know doing crazy stuff and then next thing you know the the Gozrian um, dog creature yeah he might be the gatekeeper or possibly the key master Let's see I know it gets confusing it starts chasing him around <laughs> all the way from Walmart and then when he finally got into the car yes it he actually captures Gary, and now he's going to become, as we all know, uh, joining in with their mom, 
Carrie because unfortunately Carrie begins to find out something suspicious inside the basement. So she finally went inside. She begins to find a lot of proof that Egon really does care about her until the spirit somehow came and now she got possessed just like Gary. Now he bec she becomes uh, I think the gatekeeper. Yeah. So yes, gatekeeper, keymaster together, and that's how they revive Gozer. Uh, when Trevor, Phoebe, Podcast, and Lucky had came, they went straight to the mines. They're trying to find something that was going around, and yes, they did awaken uh, Ivo Shandor um, since he was in his deathbed. And then all these other spirits were coming directly off of the uh, the shaft uh, down into the whale, the, the holes. Yeah, this giant hole. And it just appears and finally it reveals them and now they're ready to stop them. And with the help of the Ghostbusters team, yes, that's what we're prepared for. They're finally going to stop Gozer along with her, um, her Gozian the dog creatures together and hopefully be able to save Carrie and Gary together get her out of there and then next thing you know they start uh, transforming into the creature again for Lucky Phoebe was ready to shoot uh, Gozer you know as as she continues using the proton gun and the rest of the Ghostbusters team, you know, Peter Bankman, Ray Stance, and Winston Zedmore had appeared to use their guns and I know they're not gonna make that mistake twice like, like Ray had done. Um of course, um Phoebe did make a contact with Ray earlier too, hoping that maybe he'll help him out because the, the same phone number as shown in the commercial was basically his uh, ways of cold bookstore that he has so he's he was just warning her you know while they were in prison I was hoping this will ha happen but I'm glad they showed up and yes and this is gonna be the saddest moment at the end of the movie during this climax Yes, Egon Spangler had appeared as a ghost, helping them out too. And when I saw that, I was almost bursting into tears. Because I saw this in theaters, by the way, on Friday night. And while well, I was wearing my mask and all, oh man, having to see him and his older self, I mean, he looks exactly like as I pictured it. I mean, boy, it was like, wow. It was just amazing to finally get to see him one last time. And, <laughs> I really miss him. I really miss Harold Ramis, too. I mean, he's a great actor, excellent writer. I mean, he teamed up with Dan Aykroyd for writing the screenplay of the first two movies. And uh, I, I wish he wasn't gone. But it was really nice to see him. It really was. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to sound a little teary when I'm speaking, but... But you wouldn't believe how long I waited to see... Egon Spengler all this time, yet alone the rest of the Ghostbusters. I mean, that's what I wanted. I wanted to see a new Ghostbusters movie after all this time, exactly how it will be presented. So it was cool. <sighs> and it was great to see him. He didn't speak. He was definitely a ghost, as we know, but he still has the likeness into him. We definitely care. And now he finally went up in the sky. So now he could finally be in heaven. 
but he'll always be there in spirit, no matter what happens. So now the Ghostbusters team have finally uh, reunited. So they're going to continue to go on. That there's going to be some more Ghostbusting. So I think they're going to start a new business somewhere. Let's hope so. Um, and yes, I'm going to talk about the post credits. Uh, or yeah, I think it's the mid credits. Yes, we got to see Sigourney Weaver reprising her role as Dana Barrett. So I, I love the moment too, uh, where it was a take on the first movie. You know, remember when uh, when they were doing the one of those. Uh, <laughs> They were doing this um, this game that well, you had to test out um, what's underneath those cards, and, and then next thing you know, if, if you're wrong, they're gonna shock you. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those uh, IQ tests that um, he was performing. I mean, that's what what Peter's been doing with his students, but apparently <laughs> Dana's about to perform it with him, and he gets <laughs> all the shocks too. <laughs> Guess I didn't see that coming. <laughs> it's just so funny. I love that scene. And then next thing you know, uh, um, yes, um, there is a red light that's being shown um, blinking on the firehouse uh, ecto contamination unit. So it's inside the you know where Starbucks is at now. So I guess they're gonna start the business elsewhere. Who knows? <laughs> I think we might be able to get another one. Um, it'll be part of the franchise as we know it. So, okay. Yeah, so this was a bit of a dead giveaway, but I had to do it because as a Ghostbusters fan, I love it. And you know what? I'm glad I did. I'm glad I saw the movie in theaters on the big screen. It was very loud, but it was worth it. Uh, sadly, though, um, I went to see this at Regal in Irvine at the University Center there's no uh, high C ecto cooler and and they only have Pepsi products I thought they had coca-cola still but I guess maybe after well several changes going around yeah they switched to Pepsi so it's a shame <laughs> it might have been after they finally reopened the feeder that's what happened they switched to Pepsi and apparently this is becoming a bit of a lottery thing because it seems to me like I, I guess you only have to win a contest in order to get high C uh, ecto cooler drink. Speaking of ecto one, uh, there is those popcorn containers they had at AMC, so I would be glad to get something like that somehow if, if we ever go out to see a movie, and maybe I might take a chance. Um, but yeah, you have to go to AMC for that. Um, so they had some other products that they sell. They had a Cinemark with other um, toys for the movie. So all this merchandising, everything. Uh, however, Rego did actually had um, those coloring, uh, uh, just coloring sheets of the logo. I'm going to show you that right now. Yeah, you get a. Uh, here's the uh, the coloring sheet of the logo. Yeah, the, ghost, the No Ghost logo right here uh, of Ghostbusters Afterlife, and this comes with um, yeah, this comes with all these other uh, games. Yeah, this is uh, this is those uh, crossword puzzles here. There's all this other uh, other word puzzles. I mean, everything that you get. But back to that, uh, I love the movie. You know, I've been waiting for so long to see this, and I'm happy. Um, I really would love to see this again, too. <laughs> uh, I thought the cast was terrific. Uh, everyone involved in this film is sensational at this rate. However, though, there are a few issues I have with the movie, and I know I hate to say this, but I had to go state it right away. Um, what I don't like, however, was I knew this was going to happen because it seems like this always happens in Ghostbusters sometimes. Um, why does everybody have to act like Walter Peck all of a sudden? I mean, geez, you know, they're giving 
Egon Spengler a hard time. That they're talking crap about him. They're thinking he's nuts. They even call him an an asshole too. I mean, oh, that that is totally unfair. I thought that was really unnecessary that either Gil or Jason have wrote this part. It just doesn't work. Why can't they just say some nice things about him, okay? I mean, at least he was trying to save the world from total destruction. You know, mass hysteria going around. I mean, we know for sure, but yet I, I guess it's because since I know the script has been rewritten and all, I think this was sort of the storyline that they were going to do for Peter Bankman because the way his attitude is. I mean, yeah, it seemed like this could have been written for Peter instead of Egon. I mean, come on. I mean, Egon is not a dumb man. I mean, he was a smart and intelligent man that he really cares. I mean, he really knows what he's talking about. But I guess no one will believe him somehow. I just felt like that was just totally um, unconcerned. Just kind of brings the story down a little bit too. Some jokes, um, give or take. But on the other hand, all the other jokes, uh, even the memorable ones, uh, they do work, at least. So it does have some smart writing that appears. Uh, now, going back to the performances again, um, which I thought they were substantial, uh, or at this rate, terrific. I would say... Um, McKenna Grace, you know, you got to give her credit for this. She was incredible and intelligent, and very centric as as Phoebe. Because even though she doesn't believe in ghosts at first, at least now she begins to find out what was hidden in, underneath this farmhouse that her grandfather lives. So this is where it becomes suspicious. But it's also interesting because she's just like Egon. It kind of resembles to her. And Finn Woodhart, um, very funny too at times too. I, but he's also great as um, Trevor. I mean, I guess in some cases he kind of does remind me of his character in Stranger Things. I mean, I bet he's, he's probably going to be like that too in, in the later season. You know, the fourth season. When that comes out on Netflix. And... Uh, Celeste O'Connor was also great too, beautiful as Lucky, and podcast was played by Logan Kim is uh, very funny. Kind of sounds almost like you know Ray Stans in a way. I mean, he is pretty much like Ray. I mean, he he's really into this uh, paranormal activity and supernatural and stuff, and he loves to do his own podcast about that. So, what do you know? <laughs> So they were pretty much like the Ghostbusters team in a way. The fact that now we have boys and girls uh, working together. And here's the thing, folks. No matter what, Ghostbusters is for boys and girls. It's part of the young demographic, or older demographics, for those who grew up with it. It's for everybody. It's for all families together. And that's another thing that's important for this movie, is that... Now we finally got a family to to take care of. And now they're they're together. They're going to about to bust some more ghosts. So they can finally go back to their own spirits somewhere around. So they can leave the whole town alone. And now everybody can stay in peace until more ghosts is going to come back. <laughs> and that's where we're getting ready for the action. That's where we're getting ready for the punchlines. Of all these jokes and all that and everything. The CGI visual effects looks incredibly stunning and spectacular. Definitely way better than the 2016 reboot special effects that they use. Yeah, which echoes something out of uh, PlayStation 3 and 4. Definitely does not fit the tone very well. And this one actually blends in with practical effects too. I mean... They even use the, the effects of the proton guns, you know, how it blasts it and how it has that sound when they wear the proton packs and and the way we get to hear the 
the siren sound of the Ecto-1 and everything that's included. I mean, it's just amazing how they did it. It brought back its nostalgia value and it definitely respects uh, all fans around, but sometimes they do get critical about that because of its issues with the story, but that's okay. It's not going to ruin it. <clears throat> But also, we got a brand new score um, that was done by Wa Simonson. Uh, echoes uh, the Randy Elderman's uh, original score of the first two movies. So, I, I do echo all these um, themes that I'm very familiar with, so I knew they were going to throw that in. And we do get to hear the original uh, Ray Parker Jr.'s uh, theme song that blends so well. You can even hear it directly as they start the title sequence, which was only at the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there we go. I was like, wow. I mean, it, it got my adrenaline pumping right there. <laughs> and all the action. And all the, the dialogue and all put together. Oh, oh yeah, and there is a brand new song uh, by McKenna... Grace called Haunted House. Uh, it's at the end credits, so you'll get to hear that. Um, and it's wonderful. That's how you do it. It just lives on. Uh, anyway. <laughs> because I ain't afraid of no ghost. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. Okay. It's now making $60 million uh, at the box office. Hopefully it's going to go pretty strong out of its $75 million budget. And I hope it continues there because, come on, we waited this long. Um, I know it got some mixed reviews for some reason, which I don't understand, really. I think they're just still stuck in the same 2016 mode with the, the female re reboot of that Paul Feig had wrote and direct. But what can we do? What can we do? Because that's what led to this controversy that, that was going around. And I know that's why the film became a flop. And that's when people just continue to dislike the trailers and all this other stuff here. Whereas someone out there are finally seeing the light and they're now praising for that. But they're also going to try, for better or worse, maybe try to respect the 2016 film, but that's okay. You, you can hate it all you want, that's fine. Anyway, I'm just happy that now we got a new Ghostbusters movie and we're going to keep it that way. Even if I had to repeat myself twice, three times, many times. I mean, we had the video game that's pretty much Ghostbusters free because um, that was part of the story plot that they were going for like in an alternate universe but then you have to get them somewhere at different places even if you don't have a PlayStation free so you, you can get it on video game streaming around I think you can also get it on Nintendo Switch too so then you get everything So and now you get some more merchandising for the movie and more okay uh, okay, the only disappointment, too, I also would like to say was that I was hoping that uh, Louis Tully was going to reprise his role um, for Rick, Mor yeah, Rick Moranis because I would have loved to see Rick Moranis again because he hasn't been in movies for decades. And after that accident that happened, yeah, by some mugger who pushed him on the side of the street, I mean, he, he was in a hospital. It was really sad. Um, but nevertheless, I, I hope at least he's recovering and he's alright. I, I still would have loved to see him one more time. Um, and I wish they had brought back Slimer. I mean, yes, Slimer would be perfect to see him again. I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll get to see him if there's going to be another one. But Jason Ryman did a terrific job writing and directing this uh, with Gil Keenan doing exactly his father's job the way we all remember it and I hope someday we'll do get some more and still have respect for everybody's uh, 
opinions and everybody's uh, fan base. Okay. Anyway, that's Ghostbusters Afterlife. I'm sorry it took so long on this, but I, I had to go for it because I waited this long. And I give the movie, why not, five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and see you later. Bye.